Excuse me, miss. Are you tired? I beg your pardon? Are you tired? No, why? Because you've been running through my mind all day. Hello and welcome to Pod Culture Vultures, your podcast, everything that is pop culture and more. I'm Dean, your cheeky devil with the winning smile. And with me as always is my hetero life mate, Kevin. How's it hanging, Kev? Howdly doodly do. It's hanging lovely and slightly to the left. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. We're still in lockdown, aren't we? You people in the future that are listening to this, uh, we, we may be out of lockdown by now, won't we? But uh, at this point in time where we are, we're still in lockdown. So not an awful lot of uh, stuff this week. Um, did you, have you had anything worth reporting there, Kevlar? No, nothing really. Uh, I wish I could report more, oh. but unfortunately, no. I did um, I did try and watch uh, the f- new film by... Uh, is it Kristen Wing Wig, woman who was in uh, Bridesmaids? Oh yeah, the one who was in the old shit Ghostbusters movie. <laughs> You're not allowed to say that, are you? Yeah. I thought it was all right actually to go that Ghostbusters one, but uh, yeah, she's yeah. Oh, I, oh, I liked it. I like it. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> now it's this new film that she's done, and it was uh, it was advertised on Prime, but obviously. Um, you have to pay for it at the moment because it should have been out of the cinema. It's called Barb and Star Go to Vista Del Mar. That's a bit of a mouthful, wasn't it? It was. So I only got half out. It was shit. <laughs> With a total like that, I'm not surprised. Shit. One for the bin, that is, sir. One for the bin. Ah, shit on the stick. No. What shall we talk about? One film that is very dear to my heart, Biodome. And uh, I know quite a few people like it, but most don't. But fuck them, it's great. Paulie Shaw, Stephen Baldwin. Basically, the film is about two uh, slackers who are dumped by their girlfriends because they lie to get out of uh, going to uh, some sort of... um, Save the save the planet uh, type protesting or uh, clear up Bud and Doyle they're called and then they uh, accidentally get involved in a project to save the Earth uh, which requires them to live inside a biodome for a year after they mistakenly uh, saw it as a shopping mall. <laughs> Stephen Baldwin <laughs> was desperate for a piss. Iron Man, Iron Man, does whatever and I can. Pick his butt, like a girl. Hold it. That's Spider-Man. Black Sabbath did Iron Man. Oh, come on. What do you think you're so smart? What do you think you're some rocket scientist? Yes. It was interesting to watch it again, you know, through, uh, through a different lens. It's been about 20 years, I think, since I've watched it. So uh, watching it through a different lens, uh, an older lens, more mature, more refined, like a, like a lovely uh, Chilean Red Merlot. Um, I'll, watching it this time, I mean, this is a film, like I said, we used to quote it back in the day, didn't we? Um, very fond memories of watching it. Loads of moments I remember laughing out loud. <laughs> I watched it this time and I sat and I just thought, what a pile of fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're wrong, sir. You are wrong, sir. But put, put it this way, I'm, e- I'm even going to back it up here, right? So the missus is joining me, right, watching this film like she does with, with, with all these these films that we, we look at. Yeah. And when the enemy gives up after 20, 25 minutes, I'm thinking, right, okay, <laughs> there's, there's mm. obviously something not right here. Um, and she sort of pulled out a Matthew McConaughey book and was 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 cracking on with that. But I don't know. I just I I just there were some bits I found funny, some bits I chuckled out, some bits I I did almost sort of like spit my drink across the room. But overall, <laughs> overall, I just thought oh, it was what a load of pants. Wow, <laughs> you're wrong. <laughs> I like it. I don't know. It's probably because it's that nostalgic thing for me. I I liked it and. I still felt the same as when I watched it before, but I think that's just because I'm still a child. But uh, who gives a shit, eh? 
I like being a child. Oh yeah, I get that. I get, I get, it. I get that it is stupidly funny, and, and we both have a like, stupid sense of humour. But I, I don't know. I just, I just watched it and I thought it's definitely not my cup of jar dealing now. It's, it, you know, all films are of its time and place, and I think watching that film was definitely of time and place uh, for me. And yeah, yeah just, <laughs> definitely wasn't my cup of Earl Grey. You've been spoilt, sir. <laughs> the last <laughs> twenty years. I, I'm Doyle, and I'm Buzz. And when, when we're not out saving the environment, we're thinking of you, naked, thigh deep in tofu. <laughs> you like you, Leaky? What I wanted to bring up as part of this thing is just the fact that Kylie Minogue's in this film. Yes, yeah, right. She's <laughs> really, it's really weird. I mean, I don't, she wasn't in many films. I know she's an actress. She was in Neighbours, wasn't she? And Street Fighter. I saw Street Fighter, and I think she did a, a film called The Delinquents, which is a Australian film. Oh yeah, but yeah, this is just a weird one that she just turns out in a Paulie Shore film. <laughs> um, look, she is looking very hot as well. So, oh, is she, she is a fine woman. Oh, she yes. is a fine woman. Mrs. Great Kenny. singer as well. Yeah, Not to take anything away from her, but yeah, yeah, nah, but... nice pair of lungs on her. Steady on. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I just thought it was very strange that uh, Kylie's in this, and um, it's a ponderer. It's an it's an odd one, isn't it? Because it's just not. It, it's just you just wouldn't imagine if she was in it, just popping up like that and not breaking out in, into song. It's, it's a very <laughs> yeah. weird choice. It's almost like almost like a manager was like, "I've got a film, start shooting next week. It's got a skater in it. Um, he's a thing of the moment, and uh, it might be good to put it on your CV." Yeah. It's only quite a small part, though, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it wasn't a, a big part. I mean, she's in it for most of the film, though, but there's quite a lot of cameos, really, that pop up, especially the uh, the guy from uh, from The Burbs. Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like funding it all, and he's just, go, he's just trying to get Green Cooper's money back <laughs> <laughs> by making toys and stuff. Yeah, because that, that, he's, uh, he's also in Blues Brothers, isn't he? Yeah. Isn't he the little fellow? He's like one of the Nazis in, in yeah. Blues Brothers at the end of it in the flying car. But as you see, right now we have work to do. Work to do. Any scene with Russell, so the, the, <laughs> the creepy... The creepy kind of he seems like supposed to be like the stepdad to to Joey Adams, and he's just like yeah. perving on her at, at any offer opportunity. He's just trying to pervert on her, and when the things start going a little bit sideways between her and Paulie Shaw, he's in there like a shot. He's a little bit like Armand from <laughs> Mannequin, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but he's just not as he hasn't got the lines. I thought anything anything with that his him in it was great, and and he turns up. He's the pizza delivery boy at one point, isn't he? Yeah. At one point when they're talking, it goes, the only thing I'm worried about is that I've run out of Depends, which is <laughs> ad- <laughs> adult nappies, because he just sits on the sofa. <laughs> so, yeah, just watching telly. <laughs> until he gets the gig as a uh, pizza boy. Yeah, any- anything with him in it, he was almost like a quagmire, I found. He'd just like, pop up every now and again, and it was just a golden moment. Yeah. <laughs> One of the memorable <laughs> scenes for me, I like... Um, I like it. Obviously, when they're in the biodome, they've uh, been <laughs> they've been well, I say naughty, but they've been arsing around with stuff. So they get they lock them in the cupboard just to treat them like naughty boys. Yeah, old uh, Bud and Doyle. But then <laughs> Paulie Shaw <laughs> sniffs out this big container and he empties it out, and there's just loads of uh, <laughs> packets of crisps and chocolate bars and. There's loads of Cheetos and things like that, isn't there? Cheetos, yeah. Lumps of uh, tins of spam and things. <laughs> but, but also in the room, there's like um, there's like a, ma- a mask with um, a gas canister. that um, It's obviously laughing gas. And uh, Paulie Shaw keeps putting that on. <laughs> and he, and he does, he, he does uh, Dennis Hopper from uh, Blue Velvet. <laughs> oh, I'm slutty. Oh, I'm slutty. <laughs> and then he just rams it full of the food. Oh, I'm slutty. Oh, I'm slutty. <laughs> I don't feel anything, you? Me neither, you? Uh, nothing. 
<laughs> That's also, I think, the bit when it cuts back to them when they're younger in a tent and they've taken it in turns to fart and then they sniff to uh, tell each other what they've been eating. <laughs> It's one of those scenes that cut back to when they're younger, which is another scene that I, I, I was wetting myself over. And it's when they're kids and they're, and they're on the roof. <laughs> and he's sort of trying to get him to jump off with an umbrella saying, You're, you know, it will, it will act like a parachute or something. Like that. I, I can't remember the dialogue. And it's just the way he nudges him off. And it's just like something... Like we were saying about with a uh, judgment night, it was like a Simpsons moment when he falls off the roof, he just gets jumped off, and he just goes bang, and then it's just the it's just the reaction shot when he, <laughs> <laughs> when he's on the floor and he's all bent over. It's just like a Mary Poppins moment. It's just yeah. gone wrong. <laughs> oh, that that bit there, <laughs> that bit there really had me going. And they say, "Fly, Mary Poppins, fly." Yeah, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. But it's, it's 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 the cut though. It's that quick cut and then he's just all bent up and broken on the floor. Yeah, I'm here with his head through the umbrella. <laughs> Paper covers rock, to lose a buckwheat There is a scene outside the biodome with Bud and Doyle's girlfriends where they've been chatted up by um, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> some, some other guys and they're going, to a, um, they're going to another benefit. And it kind of cuts to someone playing acoustic guitar, singing, we got to save the friggin' trees. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's Carl Gass and Jack Black, Tenacious D. We needed to save some trees. We just want to save some trees. Don't say we didn't save some friggin' trees. <laughs> Must have been the first time they popped out in anything. <laughs> yeah, said, oh, Jack, Jack Black looks really young and without a beard. Yeah. And Carl Gass still looks as old as he does now. <laughs> <laughs> he does, doesn't he? Yeah. That guy doesn't age. What kind of a stupid name is that, Fogel? What, are you trying to be an Irish R&B singer? Oh, they, they let you pick any name you want when you get down there. And you landed on McLovin. Yeah, I was between that and Muhammad. William Averton was just brilliant in it. Mo- most of you would remember him from the first two Die Hard films. He was the, yeah. uh, the, 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 the reporter who gets uh, socked by... Uh, <laughs> Mrs. McLean at the end of the first film I and mean, then gets a restraining order by the second. And he's brilliant in it. And he's got a wonderful, like, like Mel Gibson, Martin Riggs kind of lethal weapon mullet going on. It's like a spray-on almost mullet he's got. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, for, and throughout the film, throughout the film, he just disappears. They have nowhere, nowhere, have no idea where he's gone. He's been living underground doing all these experiments and he's taken on the parrot as his, as his best mate. And he's down his shoulder and the parrot's just like, I am God, I am God, like that. And it's again, it's one of those really great comedy cut moments. It cuts away to something else, comes back, and he's he's wearing the parrot as a hat, and he's eating it off the bone. <laughs> and he just goes, "I am God." Back off, punks! Sir, yes, sir. We have Listen up, bacon boy. Just want to go inside and take a pee, and then we gotta go. Yeah, we're up with that, G. Girls want to get physical. <laughs> Bud and Doyle find a secret hatch to get into the biodome. So they open it up and then they get loads of people in to have a massive party. And then, of course, they mess everything up in there, all these kids and that. They've got to start again from scratch, basically, and get it all back up and running, which obviously they do and uh, come back out and get back with their girlfriends. So it is all a nice, happy ending, which is uh, really rather good. Yeah, it's just, I suppose it's a story of redemption, don't they? They just redeem themselves by the end of it, and they're, yeah. you know, sort of save the day, don't they? Yeah, so, yeah. so, yeah, save the bio done. Back in 2013, Steven, Spiel- Steven Spielberg, <laughs> not Steven Spielberg, he wouldn't have... Steven Spielberg wouldn't have anything to do with this show at all. Oh, absolutely There's not. There's no right. way he can't the show. <laughs> Paulie who? He's a proper fucking director. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Steve, Stephen Baldwin, um, he appeared on a TV show and said that there was going to be a sequel to it 
um, which focused around Bud and Doyle's sons um, getting up to some capers and uh, that it was being funded by Paulie Shaw. But obviously, that's never seen the light of day. Well, no, because I don't think anyone's seen Paulie Shaw since this film, have they? I mean, he was he was massive during that sort of time, but I haven't seen or heard from him for a, a long time. Not, not, I mean, not that I know him. I just mean in the media. He had that very small bracket in the 90s where people thought he was funny, but then it got really tedious. Annoying. <laughs> the weasel! <laughs> oh, weasel! <laughs> it's like a really, really camp man, but completely heterosexual. <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bit like Russell Brand and his shitter. Oh my God, baby, the bloody lawn and bod just missed you. Holy bloody mother of God, Jesus fucking my God, baby. Come back to lawn and bod and nearly hit ya. Oh my God, baby, you all right? It's often classed as one of the top ten worst films ever made. <laughs> Not surprised. <laughs> oh, what else is up there with it then? There's stuff that I, I've never heard of. Like, uh, t- uh, ten rules for sleeping around. <laughs> never heard of that. No. Inappropriate comedy. Never heard of that. No. Uh, Garbage Pal Kids the movie. Oh, I remember that. Definitely yeah. heard of that. And this is possibly one that we should do because it is so so ridiculous that it's worth us doing a review in the future and it's got tony newley in it which is mental incredible it, i tell you what that just sort of takes that, that reminds me i've got a um again a bit of nostalgia for you i've got a, an original transformers like plastic case where you put your cassettes in and your little bits and pieces and your toys and stuff on the back of that yeah. i've covered it with garbage pal kid stickers so i'll have to i'll, <laughs> I'll have to dig it out because it's some of the most fucking weird shit you've ever seen and it was aimed at kids yeah it was fucking just really weird really weird shit but yeah, i'll dig that out yeah yeah if we do that i one. mean i think they still do the cards the stickers or whatever they definitely still do them in america but it was just the idea of this film that they brought. Anyway, we, we won't bang on about that because uh, we'll perhaps do that one. But I think another film that's uh, often brought up in the top ten shit films of all time is a <laughs> is a film called The Stupids, <laughs> which star <laughs> which stars Tom Arnold, who also wrote and directed it. And I can remember going to the Odeon to see that. And that is when I was, I mean, when you're young as well, but that's the only film I've almost walked out of. I've always thought if you're going to cinema, you need to stick it out. But that's the only film where I was that close to walking. It's so shit. (laughs) I won't bother then. I'll skip that one. I don't know. It might be worth watching just to see how shit it is. I don't know. Sometimes it's a bit dangerous with... uh... When you go down that road, isn't it? Because you you're 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 intrigued, you're interested, but you get to the end of it and you just think, "Fuck, I'm I'm never going to get that time back now." <laughs> no, <laughs> you just robbed yourself. <laughs> Curiosity definitely got the better of you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's uh, it is a big apology. But I mean, Tom Arnold's um, not the best actor either. I think he comes in the top ten of the world's shittest actors or performers. Yeah, he's supposed to be a bit of a cock in real life, isn't he? I mean, the, the only one I think I, I I ever remember that he was good in was um, the classic True Lies with Schwarzenegger. Yeah, I knew you were going to say. Which is a brilliant film. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah that's that's the only one I remember. Yeah. It's funny because he's he was married to to Roseanne Barr, obviously for a little while. Um, but during that time, he was constantly in Roseanne, the TV show. <laughs> it's almost like she's had to crowbar him in. Just so he could get him off, fella, in here. It's a really crap one dimensional character as well. <laughs> Arnie. <laughs> Not the good one, though. It's a bomb. Stephen Baldwin says he is still recognised more for his role in Biodome than any other film that he has done. Really? Yeah. But I just thought, well, the only other film I can think of is Usual Suspects. Yeah, yeah, I can't think of um I mean he's popped up in other things, but I wouldn't be able I couldn't tell yeah. you. Yeah, that's the only the only two films that would spring to mind for me. Yeah. Give me the keys, you cats like a motherfucker. Lie! About a nine on the tension scale, Rube. Anyway, I really enjoyed Biodome. I thought it was very, very fun indeed. And I do understand that it's not everyone's cup of tea and probably it is quite childish. But I do think I may have to go and watch some other Paulie Shaw films now. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Son-in-law, in in the army now. California man. Jewelry duty. 
He did that many? <laughs> yeah, he did. Oh, that's it. I think that's all of them. Uh, there was a documentary about him as well, actually, that was quite interesting. I think Adam Sandler's in that as well. But anyway, I think I, I love it. It reminds me of my childhood. Good soundtrack. And I'm going to give that a 7 out of 10 for me. Oh, that's uh, uh, well, I'll definitely be the other end. Uh, I was interested in watching it again, as, as I say, through uh, for, for, for a different lens. I didn't enjoy it nowhere near as much as I remember, and I'd probably give it about a two out of ten. Two? Oh, mate. <laughs> you and I have got to disagree every now and again. It's uh, it's very rare, but we, it's very rare we do. But we, we agreed with this one, and 20 years later, we are disagreeing with it, I'm afraid. What a fucking disgrace. I think we should have a little game of Can I Tickle Kev's Fancy? This is the game where I'm going to send you some pictures. <laughs> and, um... <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't even sent one yet. No, we're going to get your reaction to it. Right, I'm going to send you the first picture. It's coming through now. Fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell. That's a bit fucking much. That's way too much. <laughs> it's Captain Tom Porcelain Bong. Captain Tom Porcelain Bong. I think you can buy these. <laughs> with the with, 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 uh, with the Made in China badge with the Union Jack inside it as well. <laughs> The thing is, right? The thing is, is it looks absolutely nothing fucking like him. <laughs> no, it doesn't, does it? It's like a Toby jug. It looks a little bit like Michael Gove in about 20 years' time. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, it don't look that bad. Here comes your next one. Oh, my God. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> It says, does anyone know what type of bird this is, question mark? And it's a picture of a bird, and it's perched on a big rubber cock, which has been (laughs) suctioned to a wall. (laughs) Right, I'm going to send you one more picture, and hopefully that video will work that I've sent you. Right. (laughs) Okay, this (laughs) Hey, I'm going to send it now. <laughs> Fuck it out. <laughs> Fuck it out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You've got... <laughs> Got a big answer. Okay, it's a point of view shot looking up at a big burly geezer with a big white beard, reminiscent of Santa Con. It looks like Santa. He's got a red face. He's got a big old grin. He's chuffed, slapped right across his face. And as he's looking down, or should I say looming down at the camera, what's resting on each of his shoulders are two. <laughs> Hairy legs, really hairy legs, hooked over his shoulder. Okay, Santa Claus looming down, two big hairy legs hooked over his shoulder. Right, they're both naked, and the slogan says, "Good morning, son." <laughs> fucking hell! <laughs> fucking wrong, man. That's fucking wrong. Couple of geezers, isn't there? See that chap over there? He'll get your hand off my penis! This is the bloke who got me on the penis before. Right, just that video then. Okay, uh, <laughs> is it to a is it to a group? Yeah, so it, oh, I might not let you watch it. No, I can't. It's not letting me watch anything. I'll tell you what. I'll play it, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I... And I'll explain to you what it is. I'll try it. Right, I'm going to play it so that you'll be able to hear it. Basically, there's a, someone filming. Looks like it's on holiday, mm-hmm. uh, like outside a hotel, and there's a quite a large woman, right, sitting on top of the balcony fence, right, and under her is a table with a mattress on it, right, <laughs> and uh, she looks like she's going to attempt to jump. All right, okay. One, two, and uh... <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> she, 
think this is more tickling your fancy. <laughs> <laughs> she jumps off. <laughs> she jumps off the thing, right? But the table looks like one of those uh, painting and decorating tables. You know when you paste up a bit of wallpaper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she jumps off, and she. <laughs> she... <laughs> she... <laughs> she jumps off, right? And obviously just smashes through the table onto the floor. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure she's all right because it's not that far down. But... <laughs> she just smashes through it and smacks on the floor. <laughs> I'm not your average woman. I like sex and I'm not afraid to admit it. <laughs> I was having a look around the old internet, and I don't know if you've heard of this story. I think it's been going on for a couple of months, but there's a, a woman in America. <laughs> a woman in America has done something very stupid. There's a surprise. Now, it's a woman in America, right? She, she does a lot of these TikTok videos and that, but she ran out of hairspray, and she likes to have the front of her hair really sort of slicked down, slicked down to the scalp, and then sort of a ponytail at the back. So she ran out of hairspray to slick the front down. So she decided it would be a good idea to use Gorilla Spray Glue on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically an adhesive that would be used more than likely to glue down carpet and things like that. Yeah. <laughs> so she's done that thing. Yeah, that'd be all right. I'll just pop a bit of Gorilla Spray Glue on the old nut there. That'd be fine on the old... Uh... <laughs> old swede and um, obviously buggers off out for a night out with it all dancing away gets home won't come out will it won't come out nothing she does works nothing she puts on it won't shampoo out because it's fucking super glue <laughs> <laughs> so go on the hospital no there's nothing they can do about it because obviously you can't shave it off because it's stuck right down to the scalp <laughs> There's loads of videos. So, so, I do feel sorry for her because she obviously she don't look happy. But... <laughs> <laughs> I think she fucking hates <laughs> But obviously she's got her mates, her mate that in some of the videos, they're trying to put stuff on here. <laughs> and then it's sort of like one minute, it looks like it's burning for her head, so they're kind of wafting it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what a nutcase. But yeah, I don't know where you sort of like, pull that sort of sense if that's going to work. Oh, run out of hairspray. Yeah, this fucking glue will work. <laughs> what an idiot. Yeah, but don't, don't, but doesn't the glue even say on the, on, the, on the package it's like the strongest glue in the world or something? Did she just completely bypass that yeah. part? Yeah, the spray. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, she did. <laughs> she did. Yeah, yeah well, I'll spray in it. that would stick my hair down, won't it? Yeah, we'll stick your hair down. Good you could stick a fucking car to a house with it. Stop playing with yourself, Hooper. She did manage to go and get it sorted out. I think it cost her two and a half thousand dollars to get a specialist to arse about with a load of <laughs> different mango oils. No dopers, no smokers, no alcoholics. It fucking amazes you, doesn't it? It amazes you the sort of shit that people do in this world. I mean, especially when grabbing a, a tub of glue which says or suggests it's like the, the toughest glue you can get in the world. What how do you how do you go from a little bit of um, I don't know, like Tresemme or a bit of old <laughs> Nicky, Nicky Clark straight to the, the, the glue section in, uh, in B&Q. Yeah. You know, so, oh, I'll have a bit of that. I'll stick that on the old scalper room. It's just the fact that it says it's glue. <laughs> oh, I don't care, that'll work. That'll work. I'll look good for tonight. Yeah, you're fucked, though. After that, you donut. <laughs> I mean, it's like when they had all that, st- all that stuff about having people going out and having their bum holes bleached. <laughs> It's like, how sharp have you got a fucking look when you go out then? <laughs> Just show off that. Have a look at that. Ooh. I have got the tidiest hoop you have ever seen, dear. Oh, jeez, look at the butt on that. Yeah. He must work out. Do you want to let him know about all of the social bollocks? So I don't know. Really social bollocks are Oh yes. Uh, yeah, please uh, get in touch with us. We're at podculturevultures at gmail.com for your electronic emails. 
Uh, you can also catch us on the Book of Face at Pod Culture Vultures. You can tweet a twit a twat at Twitter Pod Culture V and Instagram us Pod Culture Vultures, all one word. Lovely. That's perfect. So take it easy, and we'll see you next time, fuckers. Toodle pipski, motherfuckers.